All right, here's a quick video on this one question right here. We're going to take a look at question number 14. And this is in section 3.5 of the Red Stewart, Stewart Calculus, if you're taking Calculus 30 and using uh, that textbook. I can show you that textbook here real quick. It is this one right there. That's it. If you're in that textbook, this is question number 14 that I'm going to go through uh, with you right now. So if we get back to that, okay, this question right here, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's just clip that out. Okay, I don't want it blue. So I'll read the question while I bring it over. So it says a water skier uh, skis over the ramp shown and uh, at a speed of 12 meters per second. Okay, speed of 12 meters per second. So a speed is a rate of change of distance over time, right? So if we take a look at speed, 12 meters per second, this is how fast this water skier is moving. Now, notice that the water skier is going to go over the ramp. So it's not this change. It's actually this change right here up the ramp. Okay, that's 12 meters per second. Okay, so how fast is she rising when she leaves the ramp? At this exact moment, which is gonna, well, I'll talk about in a second, uh, how, much, how fast is she rising up off the ground? So we need a variable here. We need a variable here. Okay, and we're probably going to need to have a variable here to connect the three because this looks like a right triangle. And I'm thinking Pythagoras to connect them. Got it? All right, so um, let's make this x, and let's make this y, and let's make this z. Okay? So we've got z prime is the rate of change that the skier is going to be leaving okay, the ramp, and that's going to be 12. And y prime is what we don't know, is what we want to find out. Right? The rate at which uh, this lady here, this girl, is rising off the ramp. Now, x it doesn't really come into play too much. I'll explain how we get rid of x. We only want these two, right? That's what we're looking for. Um, but at what point? Now, it's at the point that she exactly leaves this ramp. So this is where it gets a, a little bit different, I guess, a different kind of question. But it's going to be at x equals 5, because that's the length of the ramp, okay? When x is 5, also at y equals what? 1. And at z equals, well, whatever length this z is, so if I use a different color, uh, whatever length this is, right? So we better find out what z is. At z equals, well, we don't know yet. Let's find that out. Let's use Pythagoras theorem to um, sort of relate these variables here right now. If I know that x squared plus y squared equals z squared, the x, because it's a constant for the ramp, is 5. The y, it's a constant for the ramp, so that's 1 squared. It's going to equal z squared. z is then going to equal the square root of 26. So it's going to be at root 26. Everyone see that? It's at this point when all these lengths converge, and at that point is when we want to find this rate of change. Now, three variables looks a little bit scary. We don't really like that so much, eh? But, but let's think about it for a second. Uh, okay, we know that x and y are related here by fixed constants, right? This ramp is not changing through this whole problem. It's not. So x is 5 times y. You see that? So I'll, I'll run over this once more. Again, we've got three variables. We don't want three variables. We just want to deal with these two right here, okay? This is the rate we're given. This is the rate we want to find. So how do we... How do we uh, write x in terms of one of these two? Well, you notice in this problem that the ramp is fixed, right? It's a fixed ramp. It's not going to change shape. These lengths are not going to change throughout this problem. So I know that x is five times as big as y. Okay? If you don't like me going right there, think about it. Think about it this way then. x is to y as five is to one. That is, multiply up there. That is x equals 5 times y. All right? Now, why is that a, why is that a big deal? Well, because um, how these variables are related is, of course, through Pythagoras' theorem. And I can write uh, Pythagoras' theorem now in two variables only. Watch this. Uh, where was it? x squared plus y squared equals z squared now becomes, OK, uh, just wait. Oh, y. Yeah, now becomes, sorry, now becomes 5y squared, because that's what x is, is 5y, plus y squared, 
equals z squared. Now look at this, see? Two variables only now. That's what you want right there. And so 5y squared, of course, is 25y squared. And if we simplify this a little bit, we have 26y squared equals z squared. Okay? Now, that's it. That, that's, this, is, this is huge so far. It's not an easy question. Uh, there's a few kind of weird things. This is the first weird thing, I think. Okay, I've got to figure this out at, that, at the point that we're calculating this rate of change. And then trying to figure out how three variables can be turned into an equation with just two. Okay, so that's the first two big hurdles or ramps that you've got to overcome. Pardon the pun. But now we're set to go. Okay, now we have this equation and we can differentiate this. This is going to be great. Okay, let's pop up here. I'm going to move to a different color. Let's go to red here now. Okay, differentiate. Okay, differentiate this side. This becomes 52 y and then of course chain rule because we're differentiating with respect to time uh, we have to multiply by the derivative of y and so over here we have 2z and chain rule again times z prime so notice that um, z prime good to go uh, y prime is what we're looking for awesome y well we know that y is 1 that's good and z z is root 26 so we can input all of the values and find the only the one that we're, we're looking for. You see that? And this x equals 5, we don't need to include that in there. All right? Could I have left x in there? Well, x prime is not given, and x prime is a little bit difficult to calculate, so we don't want to deal with x at all. That's why. So we solve for y uh, prime, and what do we get here? Well, we get um, 2z times z prime over 52y. And if we plug in all the values, I'll just write this real quick. So 2 times, this is going to be root 26. This is going to be z prime is 12. And, and yes, all the units do line up. Okay, so we don't need to worry about the units. Then this is over 52 times 1. And we get, when all this is said and done, the exact answer is 24 root 26 over 52, or the approximate answer is 2.35 meters per second. So you wrap that up with a nice, neat word sentence. All right, uh, you'd write something like, uh, the skier is rising at a rate of 2.35 meters per second when she leaves the ramp. And that's number 14, not a easy question, but hopefully that sheds some light on that. and. Uh, yeah, there you go. Approximately 2.35 meters per second is your answer.